Welcome to Lunch with the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We're in 1 Peter chapter 1, starting verse 2 this lesson. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, in verse 2 in your English Bible, it says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Now, he says here, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Now, this phrase is referring back to the word elect in verse 1, where Peter says, elect strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, and, and then according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. So this phrase here is referring back to the word elect. And there are two ways that we can interpret this phrase. And one way is literally, and the other way is spiritually. And the first way, literally, that we interpret this is that because, because Peter is writing this letter to Jewish believers, all right? If we take this phrase, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, we know and we understand that this letter was written to Jewish believers. And through God's foreknowledge, he already knew before the foundation of the world who would be born as biologically Abraham's children. And of those children, he already knew who would exercise faith in Christ. So, in the, midst, in the midst of this persecution and suffering, Peter is reminding them that they are of the family of God's chosen people. And Peter is writing this to encourage them. So here you have these Jewish believers who, because of persecution and suffering, they had to basically pack their bags and leave home. And they settled they settle in the area of Asia Minor, and now they are beginning their new life in Asia Minor. And it's a very difficult thing for them. It would be for anybody. I mean, imagine you or I having to pack our bags and leave home, leave most of what we own behind uh, because of the suffering and persecution that was happening, and to leave and to go to a whole new place and to start up all over again. And it, it was scary. It, 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 I'm sure it, it gave them much fear and, and, and doubt as to their future and what was going on. But Peter here understands uh, what they're going through and he writes this letter and he says to them, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. And what he's telling them is that in, in a literal interpretation of this, listen, you are Abraham's children and you will always be Abraham's children. You will always be part of God's chosen people. No matter where you go, no matter what happens to you, you will always be Abraham's children. You will always be part of God's chosen people. And he's writing this to comfort them and to encourage them that no matter what is happening around them, the suffering, the persecution, the leaving home, the having to start up, find a new job, and what's going to happen t tomorrow, and, and, and what, what's going on in their lives, they can rest in the fact that, hey, we are Abraham's children. God loves us. He chose us. And I can, and, and, and I can rest in that. All right. But we can also interpret this phrase spiritually. And this is the approach that most preachers and scholars take that 
it refers to the whole body of the Christian community, Jews and Gentiles, that God, that God saw before the foundation of the world all people who would be saved. And because God now sees us as in Christ, then we are elected in Jesus' election. Okay? We partake of his election. So you can interpret this phrase spiritually as to refer to all Christians. And, and as, as a Gentile, I can say, yes, elect according to the foreknowledge of God. God saw me in Christ before the foundation of the world, and therefore I partake of everything that he has. I, I partake of all that he is. I receive the benefits of, of, of all of who he is. So uh, I can, as a Gentile, I can rest in that also, that I am elect according to the foreknowledge of God. God saw me in Christ before the foundation of the world. Okay? And yes, it is true that there would be Gentile believers that would benefit from this letter that Peter wrote and it is true also that the Gentiles, I'm sorry, that the Gentile believers would also, who are also in Christ, would partake of his election. But we always have to remember that this letter was written specifically to Jewish believers. And everything in this letter is focused toward them. It's focused toward them. When you read this letter of 1 Peter, always keep in the back of your mind that this letter was written to the Jew, to Jewish believers, not Gentile believers, to Jewish believers. Doesn't mean, okay, don't say, well, Pastor Mark, are you telling me that uh, I don't, I shouldn't be reading this letter because I'm, I'm a Gentile? I, I, I shouldn't be reading this, that none of this that's, None of the blessings or anything written in this letter is beneficial to me. No, no, I'm not saying that. Because spiritually, as we read this letter of 1 Peter, the Holy Spirit ministers to us. And as Gentiles, we can draw out from this letter blessings and promises of God, even to us as Gentiles. But when you read it, read it, always read it. Um, when we read this letter, ask yourself these two questions. Number one, how do I apply this verse or this chapter literally, literally to Jewish believers? So when you're reading in 1 Peter, whether it's a verse, a chapter, a portion of 1 Peter, when you read it, ask yourself the first question, how does this apply to these Jewish believers? How would they see it? And then secondly, how do I apply this verse uh, spiritually to all believers, Jews and Gentiles? How can these this portion of scripture in 1 Peter that I'm reading apply to me, apply to all believers? Because, because it does. God takes these words through the Holy Spirit and ministers to, to all people, all believers. All right. And he says here, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification, through sanctification. And the Greek here is en hagiosmos, en hagiosmos, and en, E-N, is a preposition and it means in or by or through. And then hagiosmos means to separate two things. It means to set, to set apart one thing from another thing, to, to divide, to separate two things. All right. So again, we have to apply this verse, th this phrase, Literally and spiritually, through sanctification, how do I apply this phrase 
through sanctification, literally. Well, God chose or he elected Abraham and set him apart from all people of the world to make a great nation out of him. If we go back to Genesis, Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, it's written, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And then in Isaiah chapter 52 and verse 11, it says, Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence, touch no unclean thing, go ye out of the midst of her, and be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. And then in 2 Second Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, he says, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. So when he says here, through sanctification, sanctification means that God has set us apart. When I, to, to be sanctified means that like in the Old Testament, the vessels in the, in the tabernacle, when, when Moses made a vessel for the tabernacle, it had to be sanctified. It was specifically used for the temple not to be used out in the tents where you could drink from it or whatever you could do. No, this was sanctified. This, this vessel was a sanctified vessel. It was set apart from all other vessels. It was a holy calling, all right? And this is why God had many vessels in the... In the if it was set apart for the use of the tabernacle... That's what it was only to be used for. It was not to be used in common use. All right? So sanctification means set apart. And to, to interpret sanctification literally means that God took Abraham and set him apart from all other people. And God would make a nation from him. And all of his descendants would be the chosen people. They would be set apart people. Okay? A chosen a chosen priesthood, as we're going to get here later in 1 Peter. A holy nation, set apart, used for God's glory. All right? So God set apart the children of Israel to be a separate nation with, with their own moral and civil and religious laws to live by. Now, if we interpret this spiritually we understand that every single Christian is to be set apart unto God to be his people, set apart from all the influences and the sinfulness of this world system. So as a Christian, you and I are to, be, are to live our lives as set apart people, people who have been set apart by God, sanctified, from this world system. We live in this world, yes, but we are to be set apart from it. In second, in, I'm sorry, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12, he says that you would walk worthy of God who has called you unto his kingdom and glory. We live in this world, but we are to walk worthy of God, right? We are to walk worthy of God who has called you unto his kingdom and glory. In, in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And what? Verse 2. 
Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And then in 1 John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides forever. Listen, as Christians, we do live in this world, and we work in the world, and we obey the laws of the land where we live. Yes, that's true. But we are to live in this world as citizens of heaven. Remember, Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 says that we are citizens of heaven. Right now, present tense, we are a citizen of heaven. If you're saved and you have God's righteousness in you, you are a citizen of, of heaven, even though you haven't been there yet. Even though you've never seen it. God sees you in Christ and you are a citizen of heaven. And as a citizen of heaven, we are to live as citizens of heaven while we are here on this earth. Okay? Yes, we work, we vote, we can voice our opinion, but we are only passing through this world. You have to understand, we are only passing through this world. And it is not, this world is not our final home. God has called us to represent him here on this earth. Don't be attached to this world. Don't live your life attached to this world system. God is going to set this world. God has a day determined when he is going to destroy all of this. He's going to destroy it all. He's going to burn it and purge it and cleanse it and do away with all. All this, the, everything you see in the heavens and on this earth, it's all going to burn and he's going to cleanse it and purge it. Don't have your heart set on things on this earth. Don't have your heart. You live as a citizen of heaven. You live a sanctified life. You live as a Christian, as, as a Christian who, who is a citizen of heaven here on this earth as a representative of God. Here, where you go to work, you are a citizen of heaven. When you go shopping, you're a citizen of heaven. When you go on vacation, you go as a citizen of heaven. And you don't get involved in the lusts and the sinfulness of this world. Don't get bogged down by the mentality of the, the political mentality and, and, and the, the sinful mentality that is going on in the world. Don't get caught into it. Don't get all, don't get all caught up into the mentality of this world system. Why? Because you don't belong here. Well, I'm not trying to say don't, don't understand and don't keep up on what's going on around you. I didn't say that. We do live here. We do work. We do vote. We do know what's going on. But we will not, we make a decision that we will not be caught up into the mentality of this world system. Why? Because we're from another kingdom. We belong, you belong to another kingdom. That's why you have another king. It's God the Father. Jesus Christ the Son who died for you. You have another home. You, this, this home here on earth, this isn't your home. Oh no. Oh no. This is just a tent. That's all it is. You're just passing through. Eventually that tent's going to go away. God's going to take you to your permanent home in heaven. All right, until next lesson, you walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.